I know, this video is pretty late, but better late than never. I've been really busy. Anyways, with that being said, let's get into it. 2021 was an amazing food year for me. It was incredible, way better than 2020. Not only were there more restaurants opened up compared to 2020, but indoor dining became more feasible, and I just became so much more adventurous with my culinary experiences. I had Albanian food, Yemeni cuisine, Bengali cuisine, I even ate a goat brain. Yeah, I had some pretty crazy experiences. Plus, I went to a ton of really great fine dining Michelin star establishments. All in all, 2021 was an amazing year food-wise for me, and together these are just some of the many, many highlights of my year. Now none of this is ranked or ordered in any way, rather these are just some of the most memorable and delicious dishes I had throughout the year. The first really notable course I had in 2021 was the Facili Pasta with red wine braised octopus and bone marrow from the Michelin-starred restaurant Morea. Now I figured this dish would be good. It's one of the establishment's most famous offerings. Plus, it has bone marrow in it. I mean, come on, bone marrow. When I ate at Maria, it was a cool winter night and I ate on the sidewalk right in front of the restaurants, but at least there was heaters there and I was generally pretty comfortable. But when the pasta came out, it was the most comforting and coziest thing ever. The pasta was perfectly cooked, but it was how the bone marrow fortified the sauce that made this dish really, really special. And with the delicate octopus on top of all that, this was hands down one of the best pasta courses I've ever had in my entire life. It was incredible. There was another pasta course I had in 2021 that simply blew me away and it came from a very unexpected place. So one day I had a craving for takeout and I thought I'd try someplace new. So I placed an order at Hirotai and Izakaya in Astoria, Queens. Now, I didn't have very high expectations for this spot. The establishment serves both Thai and Japanese food and the menu is pretty big. And in my experience, when a restaurant tries to do so much at once, the quality I feel like can kind of slip. But still, the place had good reviews and there were a lot of interesting things on the menu. So I ordered one of their pasta courses, the Mentai Pasta. It's Japanese spaghetti with anoriko, which are seaweed flakes and a creamy codfish rice sauce. By itself, the noodles were good, but it was the sauce that was so rich and creamy combined with the seaweed that just made the whole thing pop. It was a punch in the face of flavor. I was astounded with how good it was, mainly because I just didn't expect it. Ever since then, the restaurant has become one of my favorite spots for takeout. Everything that I've had there has been excellent, but the mentai pasta remains my favorite. One of the other amazing things I had last year came from Zilonen or Hilonen. I'm not really sure how to say it, but it's a restaurant in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. It's from the same team behind the Michelin starred Oshomoko. The aim of the restaurant is to serve largely plant-based cuisine that celebrates Mexico. But leave it to me to purchase one of the few non-vegan things on the menu. I'm talking about the scrambled egg tostada and it was simply one of the best things I had in 2021. The tostada is topped with perfectly fluffy scrambled eggs, salsa matcha, New York cheddar, and toasted sesame. Eating the eggs was like eating a flavorful pillow which contrasted so nicely with the crunch of the tostada. But it was the impact of the salsa matcha which made this a truly balanced and interesting flavorful course that I loved. Unfortunately, the establishment just recently closed its doors, which just goes to show that even fantastic establishments still have to contend with this very tough environment that we're all dealing with right now. Still, I'm at least glad and happy to say that I was fortunate enough to try the scrambled egg tostada because that was one hell of an amazing dish. Concerning pizza, I've been really privileged to have been able to have dined at some very amazing and just legendary establishments within the past year. For instance, I ate at Lucali in Brooklyn, Raza in Jersey City, uh, Al Forno in Providence, Rhode Island. Pizza-wise, I really won 2021. But the best, and also one of the most surprising, was the original tomato pie I got from the legendary Frank Pepe's in New Haven, Connecticut. 
pretty much every pizza fan knows that Frank Pepe's is just one of the best. When I went there, I ordered two pizzas. I of course tried their famous white clam pizza, which was incredible. But I wanted my second pie to be a little lighter because I wasn't so sure that I'd be able to finish two pizzas. I thought it'd be really good to get one with tomato sauce, and the original tomato pie was also the most affordable, so I reasoned that it would be perfect. I was blown away. I wasn't expecting such a simple dish to be that good. The tomato pie consists of crushed Italian tomatoes, grated Pecorino Romano, and olive oil. That's it. But every component on that pizza was perfection. First off, the crust, the char, was so beautiful, and it's a result of Frank Pepe's coal fire brick oven. The tomato sauce was expertly balanced between having the right amount of saltiness, sweetness, and acidity. Those components combined with a touch of Pecorino Romano and olive oil just made for one of the best pizzas, not only of 2021, but one of the best that I've ever had. Besides pizza, burgers are another staple of my diet. The best I had in 2021 and the best I've had in my entire life was the legendary Black Label Burger from Mineta Tavern. Costing $36, it damn well better be good. It consists of prime dry aged beef cuts, caramelized onions, all on a sesame seed bun. What really makes this burger exceptional is the quality of the beef. Basically, it was the most flavorful patty that I've ever had. Plus, with the contrast, the sweetness from the caramelized onions, it's just... I mean, it is so, so good. It is worth the $36 easily. I mean, I do wish it was cheaper, though, because I'd be eating there every damn day. The first time I went to Follow Soshi in Flushing, Queens, I got the sausage Jian Bing, which I really enjoyed. But the second time, I got the Peking Duck Jian Bing, which I loved. Now, I didn't have any particular dish in mind when I went to the restaurant my second time, but when I got there, they were chopping up a freshly roasted Peking Duck. It looks so juicy and good, I just had to get it. Jian Bing is a traditional Chinese street food usually had for breakfast. It's similar to crepes and it can be stuffed with a variety of things. The one I purchased had eggs, lettuce, duck of course, uh, crispy thin crackers, and a uh, sweet sauce. By itself, the Jian Bing was perfectly executed, but it was the addition of the fresh, juicy, and perfectly cooked duck that made it really damn special. Plus, it only cost $8.50, which in my opinion, I think that's a hell of a deal for food of that quality. One of the things I particularly enjoy doing in Midtown Manhattan when it's nice out is to grab a cup of coffee, get a nice pastry, head to Bryant Park, relax, and do a little reading. I did this on a very pleasant day of September. I went to a rather new place called uh, Marvelous by Fred. It's a bakery from France that's known abroad as Eau Merveilleux de Fred. Please forgive me for my pronunciation. They're best known for their Merveilleux, which is a dessert I've never had before. Basically, it's a meringue-based shell which encases a dollop of whipped cream and is topped by chocolate shavings. The establishment offers a number of different flavors of this confection, but the one I got was called the Incredible and it's based off of the Speculose cookie. The moment I bit into this treat, I knew that I've been missing out. It lives up to its name. It's truly marvelous. The meringue was light and delicate, and the cream was bursting with flavor. Combined with the chocolate shavings just made this such a texturally interesting treat. And the whole thing had just the right amount of sweetness. It was an absolutely perfect pastry. So that's it. These were just some of the many amazing culinary highlights I was privileged to have consumed in 2021. And so far, 2022 is already shaping up to be another amazing culinary year for me here in New York City and beyond.